Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk and welcome to Pseudoscientist number two of the 12 Pseudoscientists of Christmas. And yeah, we're back to Flat Earth again. Anyway, today's pseudoscientist is someone who actually challenged me to a debate. However, at the time I was a bit busy, so I tried to schedule a debate, but he never got back to me for some reason. I am, of course, talking about Caleb, also known as KCD Industry. This shouldn't really have been a surprise because I did foreshadow this earlier in the series in the Flat Earth Dave video. Of course Caleb is on the top of the leaderboard, why wouldn't he be? I mean, at least he's managed to reach the top of one leaderboard. Foreshadowing. I wasn't exactly being subtle about it. Anyway, I saw this interesting video from Caleb where he says that he's trying to steal man gravity. This will be a nice change of pace. Believe it or not, the Globers still don't understand what gravity is in their own model. So today I'd like to thoroughly and honestly explain the extent of gravity. Heads up. I mean, I'm someone who's pretty familiar with gravity as I have actually tried to make an effort to understand it to the best of my abilities. Sure, there are parts that confuse me like when it comes to black holes, but I think I have a pretty good overview of the general concept at least. Gravity is no longer mass attracting mass theorized by Newton when an apple fell and hit him on the head. That's not what the current model of gravity is. That's hundreds of years old and was superseded by Einstein in the general theory of relativity. Well, here's the thing. There are certain scales in which using Newton's formula for gravity is completely fine, which means that you can think of it as mass attracting mass as that is effectively the result that we see. Globers are always telling me to buy a book and read. So <laughs> let's check it out. Gravitation. Hey, Caleb. Um. Why are you starting in chapter four? Are you sure you know how to read books properly? In general relativity, the analogous statements will describe how the curvature of space-time acts on matter to manifest itself as gravity. What's funny is if you keep reading, in chapter two, we motivated our discussion on manifolds by introducing Einstein equivalence principle, or EEP, in small enough regions of space-time, the laws of physics reduced to those of special relativity, it is impossible to detect the existence of a gravitational field by means of local experiments. Hm. Sounds unfalsifiable. Well, no, that doesn't make it unfalsifiable. There have been experiments that have been done to test whether relativity is valid. There are specific predictions that relativity makes, and because of this, it is falsifiable. If those predictions are false, then relativity is false. Now, there is a bit of an asterisk that I need to put there, and that's provided that we're using the correct values for everything. This is gonna be relevant later on. So when you hear somebody trying to argue that gravity is mass attracting mass and the Earth's really big and it pulls us and it holds us on to the Earth, no, 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 no. They have to literally argue, if I grab a pen and drop a pen, right here, drop it, they have to argue that that pen warped the space around it, created a gravity well, and fell to the earth. I thought you were trying to represent gravity accurately, because that is not what happens. Now, if you understood Einsteinian gravity properly, you would understand that large amounts of mass curve space-time. Now, when an object is traveling through space-time, the direction that it is traveling in will be affected. To us, this essentially looks like mass attracting mass. Also, what he read out there has nothing to do with what he said, because he read out something about the Einstein equivalence principle. One of the ways of stating the Einstein equivalence principle is being in free fall is indistinguishable from the absence of a gravitational field. Want to know how to confuse gravity? Get an orange and peel it that does not confuse gravity, it is still being acted upon by gravity, learn what a net force is. To understand the full extent of pseudoscience that encompasses gravity, we're definitely going to have to talk about dark energy and dark matter. And I hope you guys are all very comfortable with gravity completely changing frameworks soon. NASA.gov is hinting at it on their website. Well, yes, it is possible that maybe there is a better way of describing gravity than Einstein's theory of relativity. However, this assumes that the numbers that we're using for things like the mass of galaxies are correct. You see, when it comes to dark matter, we have actually found some of it. It turns out that some of the galaxies have more hydrogen than we initially thought. Now, there is still a large amount of matter that is unaccounted for, but the fact that we did find some of that matter means that there is a possibility that we could find the rest. 
but let's talk dark energy and dark matter for a second. Essentially, dark matter and dark energy were theorized because there were galaxy clusters spinning too fast. And when we looked at them, the mass that was there was not able to explain how they were going so fast, the velocity. So they theorized that there was actually matter and energy that's just invisible. Well, that's dark matter, not dark energy. Dark energy has to do with the accelerating expansion of the universe. And just so you know, Caleb, these things are only a problem if the Earth is a globe. You think the Earth is flat, remember? In fact, I kind of doubt that Caleb would even admit that galaxies are real, so it's kind of useless to bring them up in a flat Earth discussion. This should be called the heliocentric starter pack image right here. This is all you need to understand the problems with this stuff, <laughs> and these people will just scream physics. Oh, man. So when it comes to the stuff that's being talked about there, like you can't replicate a small scale orbit, the only reason why you think we can't do that is because you don't think satellites are real. If you accept that satellites are orbiting the Earth, then yes, we have replicated orbits. The meme doesn't work if the Earth is a globe, although some of the points don't even work if the Earth is flat. Like the whole, you can't replicate a pressure gradient using only gravity, well, there, there is a pressure gradient, so what do you think is causing that? Before I forget, this makes up 95% of the entire universe in the heliocentric model, and without it, gravity doesn't work. Again, the only way that it becomes a problem for gravity is if Earth is a globe, because if Earth isn't a globe, well, then you can't use the measurements that we use to work out that we need to have dark matter. Gravity can easily be explained by buoyancy, density, electrostatics, and magnetism. You know, that is an awful lot of stuff that you need to explain gravity there, buddy. And it certainly doesn't explain things like the Cavendish experiment, as much as flat earthers may like to whine that it does. You want to hear me talk about plenty of other pseudoscience? I've got a ton of that on my podcast. Hey Caleb, I already know that you talk about pseudoscience because you're in the series. You didn't quite make it to first place though, so maybe better luck next year? Anyway, I think we have enough time to go through another one of Caleb's videos. What else do you have for us, Caleb? Stop, stop what you're doing right now. Look bud, you ain't getting out of this debunk, so I'm sorry, but we're continuing. You know what lava looks like, right? Like, we know what lava looks like as it's hot. It runs kind of like a river finding its level. Do you think that lava would ever form sacred, you know, geometrical shapes, like hexagonal shapes or anything? Well, that depends on the composition of the lava, depends on how fast it cools, you know, there's a lot of different factors to these kinds of things. Seriously, just to make sure that nobody thinks that this is possible, that hexagonal shapes would be formed from volcanoes or lava, look at it when it's hardened. Look. Look. Well, you can actually get hexagonal shapes from lava. As I said, it depends on the conditions. Things like the rate of cooling is probably the most important, but other things like the depth of lava are also important as well. And we're told that this was formed from a volcano. <laughs> Well, yes, it's a result of the processes that I was describing just before. There's not just one way that lava can cool and solidify, you know, there are different ways that it can do that. Yeah, yeah. Remember Avatar? The huge tree that was cut down? Um, might have been a little bit of reality mixed in with that science fiction, but look how level this is on top, and is this sawdust from... Ah yes, the classic, this must have been a big tree because look, it looks like a tree stump. So talking about physics in the last video that we watched, this would not be possible due to physics. You see, if a tree was really as big as you're saying they were, then it would just simply collapse no matter what it's made of. You can't just simply scale something up and expect it to work in the same way. This is something that I've been trying to explain to Roger from Mud Fossil University for ages. Though to be fair, I get the impression that Roger from Mud Fossil University doesn't listen. Though Caleb probably also doesn't listen. Now before I start reprogramming your brain. Look bud, I don't think you're gonna be reprogramming my brain with this because I've heard this a thousand times before. The first time I heard it was actually from someone pretending to be a flat earther to trick flat earthers into believing this. And by God, how well it has worked. Look, it makes a lot more sense, man, than lava, seriously. Like, spring wood, summer wood, hexagonal shapes, like... But those things just simply can't be scaled up. For one, surface area changes as you scale something up. So when you end up with a large enough cell, it just wouldn't have an adequate amount of surface area for it to get all the nutrients it needs. Not to mention trying to transport nutrients vertically to the extent that he's proposing. Thought it was one example. No, these trees were all over. Look at this, yeah. You know it's very easy for our brains to find things that look like it's something else when it's not, right? 
there is this thing called pareidolia. Like for example, clouds look like candy floss, but I can assure you that they are not. And no, I'm not being paid by big candy floss to hide the truth. Would you look at that? <laughs> More hexagonal. I mean, what he showed just there doesn't even look like a tree. It just looks like hexagons. This guy built, this guy owns this. He lives in a tree. This guy's gotta be insane energy. This guy's gonna live forever. I mean, that one looks like a crater. Do you not know what craters look like? Again, that one does not look like it could be a tree to me. Have you forgotten somehow what trees look like? I don't even know how, I don't know how big these things were. I have no idea. Well, if it were truly a tree, then it couldn't have gotten that tall. It could not even have gotten as tall as that mountain there. So obviously that mountain is not a tree. Again, you would have to explain how these trees somehow managed to defy physics. Pretty odd, like, formation. <laughs> like completely level on the top. Maybe like it was cut down by a giant ax. <laughs> you know the thing that you're calling an ax right there isn't actually that big, right? Sure, the angle in the photo that you're pointing to makes it look massive, but there are photos like this one where you can see that it's not nearly as big as you're trying to make it out to be. And also, when you look at it from a different angle, it no longer resembles an axe. So again, this is just pareidolia. In fact, from this angle, it looks a bit more like a Blastoise. So why is nobody talking about this? Pokemon are real. Talk well, I've got your attention. Global warming is not real. Well, you're not going to notice much sea level rise in those photos because over the last hundred years, the sea levels have only risen by about 20 centimeters. But of course, he's also a climate change denier because he's got to buy into every conspiracy that he can. The Earth is also flat. There's no convexity to the Earth. Rail guns can hit targets 100 miles away. That's 6,666 feet of missing curvature, guys. You know that when something is fired by a rail gun, it's still affected by gravity. Right? In fact, all projectiles are affected by gravity. You just use rail guns because of how far they can shoot. But anyway, if something is affected by gravity, then the path that it is going to travel will be curved downwards. That's a weird number. The sun moves. The moon moves. The stars move. But the Earth is completely stationary. Okay, so now it's just devolved into repeating the common flat Earth talking points like a parrot. I think we should end that there then. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think the last pseudoscientist will be. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, Empty Nutkin, Mori, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, Definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.